Welcome to Girl Scream today, Ron Nicoletti. I'm with my buddy Pete Aiello, who's joining me today on the uh, Handicapping Seminar. And Pete, uh, Memorial Day today. I want to wish everyone out there a very happy Memorial Day. Absolutely, and don't adjust your TV sets. Katie Stazak did not gain 200 pounds <laughs> and get a haircut. I'm subbing for her here this afternoon. Subbing, and he's going to do an incredible job. At least that's what he told everybody before he came on the air. So we'll see how it does. You know, Pete, we got a special 11 race card today. Feature race is the sixth race. One mile and one half on on the turf course. Any difference calling a race like that than to a, uh, you know, like a, you know, we don't have many of those. Put yeah, it that it's more way. you can kind of crescendo up, you know, the first time by the stands, you just keep everything in the, kind of like the jockeys. You <laughs> ride like the, you call the race like the jockeys ride the race. Right. You're cool and collected until about the 3 eighths pole, and then the real running begins. You let it rip. And, you know, we got a carryover today in the Rainbow Six. This is an 11 race card, so it starts in race number six. Almost $13,000 in the pool. Had a couple of tickets uh, live for the whole thing yesterday. Did not pan out. So we have a carryover going on today. And uh, we'll see how much they bet in it today. We got the, the, the stake race starting the first leg of the Rainbow Six this afternoon. As I mentioned, we got 11 races, so we're going to delve right into this card. And our first race on Memorial Day is a six throw on Claimer 3 and up. Non winners of three races in life or race in six months. One scratch in here, number three horse, Catrabello, is the clan out of the race. Hey, Pete, look at that. We're in agreement. That did not happen a lot when we were together at Gulfstream Park West. Gone as win number five. Yeah, he should be better this time, Ronnie. Second start off an extended vacation. To me, this is a huge drop in class. You know as well as anyone, I'm kind of the uh, Tampa <laughs> savant, if you will. And this was a solid race he comes out of. Gray Bayou, one of the hard-knocking horses in the, uh, that uh, category, the two other than optional 30 category. The second-place horse, Moving Style, dusted a field of solid allowance horses at Thistledown just two weeks ago. So this horse only got beat uh, three lengths to those. It was off an extended vacation. Gets the Bug Rider here this afternoon for Efren Loza Jr. Very, very good alternative to the first race favorite. Actually, uh, three, another horse came out of that race, two and one. So three next out winners in that race gone as wind, uh, that 32 optional claimer. Love those key races. We both have the number two, Dreaming of Nino, in second. This one's dropping to the lowest level of its career. Returned from that uh, freshening to track the pace. Finished third against $25,000 optional claimers going five furlongs. That was on a wet track. It was listed as good. I think this horse is spotted well. Yeah, the cream is going to rise to the top here, in my opinion. You have some horses that are taking steps up in class off of victories, like the four Acapolito. And then you have horses that are on the uh, downward step of the class ladder, like Dreaming of Nino and Gone as Wind. In this particular case, I'm going to take the horses that are facing better company, looking for a victory, versus the one stepping way up. Because, I don't know about you, but I think there's a huge class to Distinction here when you get from the ten thousand dollar horses up to sixteen and twenty. That's a big step up. Yeah, big step up. You know, I had originally had the three horses, one of my selections, so, so I. I added the four Aquapolito in third. And as you mentioned, stepping up. Uh, you know, uh, defeated the uh, sixteen thousand dollar two lifetime claimers. That was going four or five furlongs last time out. Was forty three to one. Yeah, and one like a good thing was actually the trainer's first start as a trainer, and he aired. So well, uh, we'll see if he can do it again. I'm a little scared. We set a very dangerous tone. If you're serious that you had the three and third, that means we had the exact same three horses. Well, we'll see how the day plans pans out as we go forward in here. We're going to go to race number two. It is on the turf. It's five furlongs, made in Philly. Two-year-olds, made in special weight. Two-year-olds on the turf. Really excited about this to see how it goes. And uh, I went with the number three, Devilish Kitten. is a daughter of productive turf sire. Kitten's Joy. Everybody in the world knows how good Kitten Joys are on the grass. Debuting for Wesley Ward, who's the master of, uh, of two-year-olds uh, making their first start. It's three solid uh, workouts showing the bond. As I mentioned, 22% were first-time starters. Lasix. And Tyler Gaffleon is running in great form. Yeah, the thing about this filly, as has been the case with a lot of the horses carrying the Ken and Sarah Ramsey colors lately, they take an awful lot of play. <laughs> so I use the horse. I think she's a very solid contender, but... I'm just mystified that we have the same three horses in this race. <laughs> the other Wesley Ward horse is the horse I used on top, the five sweet moment. I'm the president of the Jesus Rios fan club, so this should be a definite uh, mo good move here. I think she's drawn well here, Ronnie. She's drawn next to four song memory, who wasn't quick out of there in her debut run, and now she's also drawn to the uh, out inside of uh, Queen of Silence, who, based on the work tab, doesn't look like she's going to be quick either. So should be a clean sail for number five in the race number two. Yeah, she's a $95,000 daughter of Sydney's camp. And I think this is the first crop of Sydney's candy, so we'll see how uh, that, that sire plays out in here. And we both have the seven. You actually have it in second. This is a daughter of Win Early Sire. It is wonderful. This one produces first out winners at a 24% rate. 
14% with debut turf runners. The concern I had about this horse, and you put it in a second, was at, when I did the handicapping, there was limited workout data on this horse. So I went with the breeding angle here, but I didn't see a lot of work, so I didn't know how well this horse was doing in the morning. Well, the, th the key thing that swayed me, because this is one of two horses in here for Sano, Gonzalez is riding this one, Manny Cruz on the other. From a standpoint of two-year-olds and precocity, I think Gonzalez fits this horse better than Manny Cruz would. So for me, the precocity speaks to the seven, not the six. And those were my two uh, horses to try to complete the ticket. Precocity. Woo! Let's go to the he third. He was great, you know. You remember precocity? <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, third race of six for a long. he won the Pimlico special. Oh, there you go. Pimlico, sister track. Third race, six furlong, maiden claimants, Phillies and Mash, three-year-olds and up $35,000 in here. We both went with the number six, chocolate almond. Pray tell why. Why are you copying me is what I want to know. Well, you know, we don't compare notes prior to the program, although it was suggested we do that this morning. Yeah. This horse uh, goes out for trainer Ralph Nix, comes off an extended vacation, but at least lately, that's been a very good move for Ralph Nix. He's bringing horses down from other venues off of long layoffs, and they've been very, very good and ready to go. For me, this field does not have a lot of depth in it, so I'll go outside. The draw is perfect, the training is perfect, and Gaffleone, as we said, has been riding great. Yeah, and I look back at that race that was last August at Monmouth, the four horses that came out of that race, it was a long time ago, so not really a key race, but four horses that ran in the race came back and won their next start, so a key race, you mentioned the connections there, lots to like, as far as I'm concerned, about Chalkland and Ammon, and I guess the key to that is that the, the Ralph Nix bun just been incredible with these horses coming off a layoff. Well, when you look at this form, I mean, you almost have to consider this horse a first-time starter. She adds LASIK, she's been off a long time, and she makes her South Florida debut, so don't penalize her for her debut run, and just trust that Ralph will have her ready. Yeah, number four, Rosa Mistico, who I put in second. The most seasoned runner in the field is dropping back to the $35,000 level. Hoping to prove on the recent pair of fourth place finishes at the distance. Juan Rodriguez, Harry Hernandez, the apprentices, all of them here have been riding in good form. Threw that one in second along with uh, uh, three. Dreaming of uh, uh, Angela, who you have in your ticket show. Yeah, I used the one for second little twitch. The rail's no bargain with a first time starter, but you get David Fox as the trainer, and I always say I think that David uh, is very, very adept at getting horses ready first time out. I'm intrigued by the three, not in a good way. What did they go to the bug boy for on this horse? That is my key question in this horse, and that's why she made my third spot. Yeah, the Florida sire, Ken Farrow's had a really good uh, freshman season, the three-year-old season, still up in the air, but the, a good debut sire that there was. Eight local workouts showing. Two of them were speedy, too, sub-48 yeah. out of the gate. Let's go to race number four today. You got anything else in there you want no. to talk about? Fourth race. This one, five furlongs. This on the is the race I want to talk about. Oh, this is the one. All right, I'm going to go. I'll be back after this. he talks about this race. Five furlongs on the turf. Made the claim it's Phillies and Mads, three and up. $12,500, scratch the number nine, American Razor. And when we come back a little later on, Pete will tell you if there's one unpublished workout in here. Again, don't tell Vanessa, but uh, uh, it was at uh, Three Furlongs at uh, Gun Farm, wherever that is, Gun Farm Spa in Florida. <laughs> 38 breathing. It was 38 breezing. I know that part of it. Now, go ahead. Well, it's, I want to <laughs> talk about number one, Don't Tell Vanessa. She's my play of the day here this afternoon. We tried to get the replay queued up of her debut run. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't get it in time. However, if you have access to replays, whether you're on track here at Gulfstream and you want to use one of our kiosks at a simulcast faci facility that has a kiosk, or if you're at home watching us via the online network, Please watch the replay of the one Don't Tell Vanessa the first time she ran. It's absolutely amazing. She looks like she's going to clear the outside fence going to the 3 8 ball. Only Adamar Santos would have had the guts <laughs> to continue not only to try to ride her, but to win the race. Not only does she win, guys, she wins by open lengths that afternoon. Based off that huge run, they stepped her up into special weight, and she was the talk of the track, so she took all kinds of money. But she was not in against $12,500 horses. She was in against Queen of the Spa, who came back to win here at Gulfstream for, four, I think, thirty or 40000 in any case, it was a much tougher field. Now she drops back into 12-5. She's had some time, I think, to mentally prepare herself for what she's up against. And she has an inside draw with sprint speed. Find me a horse in here with sprint speed, and I'll take you on against Hotel Vanessa. And that thing, uh, she was a maiden that was disqualified from the race you were talking about. Yeah. That's back with maidens again. Well, I can tell you this. If you watch the replay, she has to come down because but for Piccolilli, who was second in there, right. she would have made the outside fence. That horse was in her way <laughs> wow. and she was trying to bolt, and the rider Kept, kept her in because of that other horse. Well, another horse that, that I had on top of my ticket, 
that you did not use. And one of my angles that I like, horses that were disqualified, they're proven from a victory and come back against Maiden, and that's the four D's Causeway. Disqualified uh, go, uh, going a mile. It was on April 22nd. Now he's going back to the grass and cutting back to five furlongs. You look at that last race, duel for the lead, week in late to finish fourth. That was against $16,000 types going seven furlongs on a good main track. Proven commodity on the grass. Put that one on the ticket. But now I have to go back and look again at Don't Tell Vanessa, who I had in second. Yeah, Don't Tell Vanessa, the play of the day for me. For me, she's the strict speed in here. She's inside. She has a five furlong turf gear where a lot of these horses have not proven that they have that kind of speed. The three, Richie's Red Hot Honey, is the wild card of that. She's cutting back from a mile showing speed going longer. Spring Me made sense to me. She made the bottom of my ticket as she did yours. Uh, let's go to race number five today. One mile claimers, three and up, nominators of two, or three-year-olds in here. And uh, this race has, has a full field of eight runners in here. And I wanted to go back and show you the performance of number four, Mr. Farron. I was watching this race, and this horse's saddle was slipping as the ride was going. I tried to catch it. It was up there in second. I tried to catch it on the screen, and I could not do it in here. You know, it's hard to see, but, the, you know, the horse just backed up in there. And, and, you know, the trouble call actually says that the saddle was slipping in there, which I, you know, tried to catch it in there. I remember, I, may, I don't think you said anything about it at the particular no. time, but I watched it. So I threw this horse on the ticket. The trainer is Alejandro Memo. He's uh, 23% to the turf to dirt move. He's got a seven pounds apprentice John Cruz and even my eyes were deceiving me and the, the people that made the chart up or the horse's saddle did not slip and just weaken I don't know about that you kind of looked there when the backtrack and Monterey didn't look like he had much control yeah, right. for him, so there might be something to that I'm not going to argue with anybody right. who wants to pick anything in this race for me, this was, again, a tactical situation. You have not been able to make up a lot of ground on this racetrack. I wanted, in the worst way, to play JC Universal, the three on top, but he just comes from too far back to put him on top, the way the main track's been playing. Furious shot landed on top of my ticket. I think he's going to get first run on the speed, who is he did it his way. Yeah, I think this race is wide open, like you said. Uh, you know, he did it his way is one I put on there. Moving to the Jillian and Drazen Bonvita. Claim stretches out. Hitting the board in three over sprints against similar. That was going three quarters of a mile concern zero for two at the distance so I didn't really know what to do with there I was going with the number four Mr. Fahrenheit thought I had it all locked up in here and I said oh I remember this horse's saddle slipping put the replay up and I, I just think that that might have caused that horse to drop back so uh, a wide open affair race number five absolutely let's go to race number six it's our feature event of the afternoon one mile and one half on the turf three year olds and up sixty thousand dollars a scratch in here of number seven, Arch Avenger. And I want to go back and show you a race from uh, right here on April 4th that you called. And that is Morning Calm uh, closing to win at a mile and seven sixteenths, which is key in this distant race. This was a perfect job ride by jockey Leandro Gonsalves that afternoon. He kick-started a rally. He's up on the outside there, getting ready to get outside the four and close with a rush to get up and win it. Brown's gap is in front. He would come back to be okay against a similar field of four allowance horses. But Morning Calm running down the leader in the late stages. Ronnie, for me, this is very much the storyline. You have a horse that has speed. He's sharp. He's a three-year-old, and he's extra game. And then you have Morning Calm, who has no speed at all, has some seasoning to him, and is the four-year-old model. We're talking about Rizwan versus Morning Calm in the Monday feature. Uh, I mean, Rizwan, I really like this horse. A four-time local turf winner. Pete, I didn't know what to do with the mile and a half distance set. I went with a horse that's sort of proven at it, and that is Morning Calm. And that's the only reason I have Rizwan. Rizwan, very game last time out, winning the English Channel by that neck. Well, I'll tell you, Rizwan is absolutely my favorite horse that can t runs in South Florida right now. Just based on the fact that he is a gritty, gritty racehorse. When you go back and watch his victories, even the races uh, where he wins by two a, a length and a half, he faces challenges. He dares you to hook him. And last time out, he looked dead beat. Comanche Storm was under a full head of steam. Looked like he was going to run right by. And Rizwan pinned his ears at the eighth ball and said, sorry, not today. <laughs> I love that, the tenacity yeah. that he has. Right. I think that uh, for me, it's both a sentimental play and also a hand handicapping play here in this race. Yeah, he's absolutely the one to beat. You know, we, I, I imagine you had two selections up there. Your other selection was the seven, Arch Avenger, like it was mine. I put the five, tap and trade in third. Getting a really major class check today. And, you know, after those two impressive victories, but at the $12,500 level, another one that you don't really know what's going to happen with this mile and a half distance. You have three horses in this race that are taking on uh, our, our, our allowance and stakes horses on a routine basis. The one, two, and 
six. Everybody else will have to rise to the occasion. Right. Let's go to race number seven this afternoon. It's one mile claim at three and up. Non winners of a race since November 26th. Fifth. That is six months. There is a scratch in this race of number three, Valerius. And I went with the number six roll up in here. And I'll tell you why. Stretching out to a mile. Eight previous races at this distance. A couple of wins. Two wins. Two thirds. Set the pace last time out. Weekend at the eight pole to finish third against the same level of competition. Kathleen O'Connell, Eddie Nunez in the saddle. Just thought this, to me, on paper, looked like the logical horse in this race. He certainly is. You're going to have to catch him to beat him. The concern with roll-up is if you hook him, he's liable to give up the goat, so to speak. I like a horse in here. This is my second best bet of the day, if you will. Second? Uh, yeah. You're allowed to? Yeah, I'm allowed to. Okay. Gonna, I, I didn't have, know the rules. I, I, I have, know. Well, you have my rule book. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I, but. I left it at Gulf Stream Park West. <laughs> <laughs> Whiskey Tap is the horse in this race. I like him quite a bit. Second start off the frat, or a long layoff for trainer Sandino Hernandez. He had an absolutely abominable trip last time out. It's not denoted in the running line, but at no point was he cuff comfortable. And uh, I think that the stretch out to a mile, the return to this racetrack, and the second start off the layoff with an outside gate, he'll sit behind roll up from an outside post and then kick by him when it matters. And knowing roll-up, if you hook him, he's liable to just say that's enough. For yeah, me. and you're key about that. He really likes this track. He's had seven races with uh, two wins in two seconds, so four for seven. The other horse that we both used was Dream Maestro, stretching out to this one-turn rally. Rally Lady finished third uh, against Similar going. Uh, that was uh, seven furlongs on March 29th. Giuseppe Isidernia. Good with horses stretching out. Not really a, a major strap out, stretch out today. Jose Alvarez. This is the Gelding's 68th career start. Six victories, but a lot of places and shows. He's good for the bottom of the exotics. Yeah, let's go to race number eight today. And this one is one mile and one sixteenth on the turf. These are made in fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. Scratch the main track only participant, number nine, Street Smoke. And you have the number seven up here, Tis Duet. To wet, and I think, is this your third big best bet of the day? No, no, this is probably <laughs> the most tepid selection I have all afternoon. For me, I looked at this race, and I didn't see a clear separation between the favorite and about the fifth choice in the race. So I went with the horse that I think is going to be the fifth choice in the race, the Seven Tiz Duet. I like Michelle Nehai's work with turf horses. She takes her time, gets them ready. Carabao has the call here. He's been riding the grass course as well as anything. And I like the race she comes out of. Rosedale Arch freaked that afternoon, won easy. Tiz Duet only beaten two lengths by everybody else in there. Well, let's go back. I want to show you a performance of number six in here today, and that's pretty and sweet. This one really closed well in its race. Rallied from ten lengths off the pace. I know you know it because you called this race. Yeah, I wanted to actually see this, so I'm glad to see it. I wanted to make sure that this was the same horse I was thinking of, and indeed it was. She, you can see it. She's the 10 horse finishing up full of run down the center. Here and she if, comes now. Yeah, she's right in the screen there, finishing up very well. A bit green, trying to shift round inside, but Castro gets her up for second uh, behind a nice winner that afternoon. So she doesn't have to do much where I'm improving here today, although I would say if I was the rider, I'd try to keep her a little closer. She dropped awful far back. Well, the horse I ended up putting on my ticket who you have on in the third spot is French Channel. It's the daughter of English Channel. Stretching out today to a mile in the 16th. Responded last time out to the addition of blinkers by coming within the neck of defeating $75,000 maidens. That was going a mile. It was on that good turf course that day, Ramon Morales. 29% with horses making the second start off for the 45 to 180 day layoff. Tyler Gaffleon, and this is a Stronic a Stables a sophomore, so I just thought this horse sitting on a big performance. The barn there certainly has the stats to make this horse win second off the bench. It's interesting that we're both kind of dismissing the chances of the likely favorite Alpine Sky. You used her for third. She gets to the turf for the first time. She stretches out around two turns for the first time. She adds blinkers for the first time. A lot of firsts for me. I don't like to bet horses that have never done uh, done something before. Well, one of the things I did like about that horse, and the reason I put it in third, it is that it's a daughter of Indian Charlie. I like Indian Charlie's on the grass. She's, as you mentioned, getting all the uh, different karma moves today, and that is number five, Alpine Sky. A anybody else that you want to point out in this race here? Well, let's go to race number nine, six furlong starter, optional claim at three and up, $16,000 in here, and I find this race uh, very wide open myself in here. I went with the two, Professor Jack. Who did you go with? In here. I went with the seven, but I agree with you completely. I think that this is the toughest race on the card. If you're playing the late pick four or the late pick three sequence, you're going to have to do a little spread city here, I think. 
to try to cover the bases because there's value everywhere you look at it, especially uh, in the form of horses like your horse, the two, who's 5-1 to one on the morning line. Honda Cario, my top play in the race, 8-1 to one on the morning line. Pedro Cotto has the return call for Efren Loza. This is a, an interesting class move. I don't know how to judge it, but I think Honda Cario will be better second start over the surface. Yeah, no, I had him. That, that, he was my first alternate to put on the ticket, so I sort of agree with you with the, with the number of eight horse in here. As I mentioned, I used Professor Jack. I just thought this was an impressive first out bottom level winner back on March 6th. Now drops to the $16,000 level. Followed that maiden score. I thought it was ambitious in its next start where it stalked and faded against $15,000 optional claimers. Trainer Giuseppe Ayacidernia, Luca Panici. And I just thought this was an intriguing son of Bellamy Road and I think he spotted well in this spot. Not going to argue at all. They got ambitious when he broke his maiden by open lengths and tried yeah. much, yeah. much tougher. Now they're back in for the reality here. Well spotted. Another horse I think is intriguingly spotted is the five, Sparky B. He beat a field of very suspect cast, so to speak, but he did it nicely. It was his first start as a three-year-old. It was his first start at this class level. The question I have is how good is he? Tyler Gaffleone thinks he's good enough to have the return call when I would imagine he had the option to ride the four. Well, my long shot comes in this race. I give a long shot each and every day, and that is the number six. Seeking fame, you're going to look at this horse and say, why? Well, you see the two horse, two races with the blinkers on. Not very good. One on the turf, one on the main track. Blinkers off today. Larry Pilati, the trainer. I think if you're looking for a little horse that might be able to jump up, if not win it, be on the ticket at a square price, 10 to 1 on the morning line, you might want to use a horse like that. And as you can see, we both have the uh, one re nombre on our ticket, but uh, this is a wide open affair. Spread City. Okay, let's go to race number 10, six furlongs and allowance optional claimer. Phillies, mares, three and up, $16,000. Squatch, squatch, scratch the number 10, because I was going to say twinkling, so I got ahead of myself. Scratch the 10, twinkling time, not squatch, scratch. So I went with the one, and this horse is hard not to have on top of the ticket, and that's Miss Deja Vu. A lot of speed in here, though. I agreed with yeah. you. I think she might be the speed of the speed. Distinct Diva is not going to do us any favors, Ronnie. Right. The number three, Upbeat Mood, is a horse that I did not care for. You used her second. The wild card in here is the eight horse, Midnight Dream. She's been laid up since last summer in California. She debuts for Gustavo Delgado, who is very, very good at getting horses ready off the layoff. Frankly speaking, she stakes tested in California. If she brings her A game, they're running for second money. The layoff is the key question, though. Yeah, 373 three-day layoff. I love when they're off a year and a couple of weeks because they're going to end up real quick. So that's how I know it's 373 days. Yeah, she's a daughter of elusive quality and uh, she finished third in those sprints in San And Like you said, if she's ready, a good barn. They know how to win off the long layoff. Number three, upbeat mood. Who I put in second, as you mentioned, I didn't know what to do with this horse. Comes off all those, uh, you know, turf uh, sprints over there. Five turf sprints, one second, two thirds. But why did the main track today? I don't know. That's why she didn't make my <laughs> ticket. A horse that did for the bottom half of your exotics is the five, Jamie's Dancer. You haven't been able to make up a lot of ground on this racetrack, but this will be a race where I don't think any racetrack will matter because they're going to be cooking early in here. Well, we're going to go to our 11th and final race on the Memorial Day card. It's a five furlong turf event. Maiden claim is three-year-olds and up. $12,500. Let's hope by this time you're all alive in the Rainbow Six, the pick five, the late pick four, and you want to bet the super high five, which comes in this race. And I went with the number eight, Traficante, and this one is dropping to the $12,500 level, turning back today to five furlongs, getting Lasix after setting the pace and weakening to finish fourth against $16,000 maidens going seven and a half furlongs. That's two turns here. I just like the progression of turning back, all the different things that's happened with number eight, Traficante. I don't have any argument. I must have been asleep when I didn't use that horse on my ticket. I will be sure to do so in my multi-leg exotics. Four Rocket Boulevard is a horse that's actually won. He was DQ'd over at Gulfstream West. He has five furlong turf speed. This is an intriguing pace scenario because you have horses like Swagger who are coming off the main track. I'm uh, intrigued to see that, Ronnie, you and I are both. I've always been, but now you have <laughs> even got you off of the hand-pick bandwagon. He's been favored in his yeah. last five races. Yeah, and I didn't have him. But, you know, you're talking about pace in here. What about the two Magic Jackson who was part of the pace to where aforementioned Rocket Boulevard before his finishing, I thought, a respectable third. Was 43-1 to one last time out. Priscilla Nichols, Arnie Fontanez in the saddle. This one is going to be part of that pace scenario in there. 
Another horse that intrigued me, and is that the, that's the number 10, Unbroken Circle. First start after the ultimate equipment change here this afternoon. He's been off for over a year. He's been tra he's trained by Fernando Abreu, who took over for the late Alan Jerkins. Fernando's been doing good things. I think with a wild card in a race like this, I'll go with the wild card. Both the 10 on Broken Circle, who's been off forever and his first time on turf, and the one Swagger, who in my mind is somewhat of a wild card. Second start at this level, but first time on the grass. Well, here we go. We, uh, that's the 11 race card. I want to ask you, what do you think today about the Rainbow Six? We're putting a ticket to together today. Did you spot a couple of singles or except for your horse is not in this single? Your no. Number one best bet in the for day. For me, it's, it's a tough sequence. You almost have to take a shot early on because I think, you know, the first leg of that sequence is Rizwan and Morning Calm. Right. For me, one of those horses have to win. Right. So you have to, in my mind, you have to pick one, hope you're right, and then yeah. spread some of the other races. Yeah, I mean, that's the way I would see it. I did pick the, uh, the inside horse, Morning Calm in there. Oh, for the reasons I mentioned, I just the, the distance has me afraid uh, that Rizwan might not be able to handle it. But Rizwan, as far as the class and the guttiness, that's the one to beat. So we have 11 races today, Pete. We're going to take a little break. Pete's going to come right back and update you on all the scratches, all the changes you need to know about uh, uh, racing today at beautiful Gulfstream Park on Memorial Day. And once again, happy Memorial Day to everybody out there. Have a great afternoon. We're certainly glad you're here.